joy. The third Sunday of Advent, as well as the fourth Sunday of Lent, are Sundays in which the Church invites us to rejoice, to be joyful. Why should we, re we rejoice and be joyful? Well, in the fourth letter to the Philippians, verse 4, St. Paul tells us, he says, Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice in the Lord. What St. Paul is saying is this, our joy has to be in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Third Sunday that in Advent, the reason for the rejoicing is because Christmas is very close. And that means the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He who came to save us from sin, to open up the gates of heaven, give it, to give us life and life in abundance. The creator of the universe is about to be born of the Virgin Mary. And given that the day is approaching quickly, we rejoice immensely over this fact that he will be born. Another biblical that passage <clears throat> that is impressive with respect to rejoicing is that of the prodigal son. Jesus says there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents than over, over 99 that do have no need of repentance. So a sinner returning to the fold, a lost sheep returning to the shepherd, is a source of immense rejoicing. Rejoicing because an individual has walked away from God, has come back. For this reason, St. Thomas Aquinas says, the conversion of one sinner is greater than the creation of the whole universe. Finally, another, another verse that we should meditate upon is taken from Luke chapter 1, and it's Mary's Canticle of Praise, or we call it the Magnificat. Listen to what Mary says. Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So if we really want to experience true joy, authentic joy, Mary teaches us, we, mu we must rejoice, but rejoice not in the things of this world, not in creation, but to rejoice in the creator of all things.